Well, who needs men, right? Bloody useless. <laughs> Divorce, child custody and child support has been so thoroughly biased in women's favour that it's often financially beneficial for the woman to remove the father from the household. Indeed, women are encouraged to divorce and separate rather than being encouraged to work hard at their relationships. The glue of family and society is being dissolved. As we've grown uh, in society towards a more si a situation where whereby people are getting less uh, married, less less often. In fact, a lot of babies now are born outside wedlock compared with 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, this means that a lot of men have even less rights because single dads don't have an enough rights. And so there's been a lot of protests about this, and I think rightly so because I think that it does affect uh, men's health, and also I think that the children do need to have uh, socialization from both parents. So, you know, we're always complaining about, oh, we can't get through here, it's a glass ceiling. We should look at the glass ceiling and bring up children. Jesus. <laughs> it's not even a ceiling. It's, we're not allowed to. Um, it's, not we don't, it's not that we don't want to. It's that we're totally not allowed to, to, to bring up our children. Also, then, they will think very carefully about what they're doing when they do split. Because at the moment, it's too easy. And, it, and, it, and, the, and the trauma that's caused by the current system is just appalling. That, that where there's um, a custody battle, in around nine out of ten cases, it's a, the ch child is awarded to the woman rather than to the man. If there's a debate, men men very often have not seen their children. I mean, I, t I talk to men who who because they've been for whatever reason because they've not seen their children have gone to this kid's school and watched them in the playground, this kind of thing, which is rather sad. And uh, so I think that that. Um, this is an era where I think a, a more equal approach would be valuable. Mothers seek to get rid of the father, but leave his wallet behind, or else turn to the state for support. I'll give you an example. My daughter, um, she slept with my husband a couple of three years ago, and she freely admitted, she said, I can't believe, she said, the amount of money that I'm getting now that I didn't get before. I paid my rent, my rates, I'd have got my family tax credits, so I'd have got the child benefit, and I'd have got the support from, from Nick as well. She said, I'm better off financially as a single mother, she said, then I was, when I was with Nick. And now that she's, this other chap's moved in, they're getting married next year, as soon as he moved in, their income went down. When you actually are better off being a single mother than you were when you were married, there is something wrong with a system like that. Women have a menu of options to assault men and destroy family, given by a government that reaps the benefit of female spite. Women don't have the wisdom to leave the powers alone because they're too selfish to understand the consequences. The real purpose of continuously defaming men, belittling fathers and also inflating the incidents of male child sexual abuse and male domestic violence is to dismantle the family and further separate men from children and women's lives. By using this divide and conquer technique based on lies and prejudice, the greatest protectors of children and family, men, are kept away from those most in need of protection. The reason this is being done is simple. The family unit, headed by the man, is a competitor to government and other agencies first thing that had to be destroyed was the family, the man, because he will not work for the state, he will work for his wife and children, and his loyalty will go to his wife and children. Men don't bend over and do as they're told, as government would like, and men don't look to government to solve all of their problems. Men have an instinctive understanding that self-reliance is the only protection from tyranny. The same cannot be said of women. They are far more malleable and controllable. When a man looks at the world, he looks for freedom and opportunities for himself and his family. He wants the ability to succeed so that he can provide. When a woman looks at the world, she wants security and comfort. She wants to depend on someone to provide that for her. Where a man is not available, she desperately looks for a replacement. She looks to the state. This is why many were fearful of what it would mean for women to have the vote. Amy, are you getting enough from the state? I don't think I am, no. I think everybody stands here and says, oh, all these mums are living off benefits, not going back to work. But maybe if they gave us a little bit more leeway with childcare... What do you get at the moment? Just, uh, Pardon? What, what sort what? of I get about, help do you I get? get? I get housing benefit and income support. Women voting leads directly to big government. Women don't vote for less taxation and easier business regulations as men do. Women vote for more social services, more benefits, more childcare. More government departments provide help, more staff, more, more, more. Women vote for all of the things that lead to higher taxation and that would be largely unnecessary if they restored their faith in men. But the government's success has been to divide women from men by selling the story of man's evil.
If families were allowed to take care of themselves and raise their children normally, they wouldn't need social services, child support agencies in the NSPCC, lawyers and counsellors, ASBOs and increased police numbers, probation officers, higher council tax, bigger prisons and fast food restaurants for Sunday dads. The list goes on. How does this work and how does it maintain itself? How does it maintain itself? Yes. Well, the beauty industry maintains itself by defining um, more and more behaviours, uh, categorising more and more, more behaviours, normal behaviours, as acts of abuse. So, for example, whereas 30 years ago, um, the uh, NSPCC would, was concerned with the killing and severe beating of children. It's now concerned with smacking children, shouting at children. It uh, has even tried to suggest that five-year-old boys who have an interest in five-year-old girls uh, are paedophiles. It's actually used those words. They're not my words, they're the NSPCC's words. Taking men away from children generates phenomenal income, thousands of jobs and huge political power for those responsible. Partly because adults have, have been prevented from taking responsibility for the children that are around them. The concept came about that women would go out to work and the state would provide uh, a, a childcare for the children. And in a sense, that is lingering behind everything that's even going on today. Single parent mothers are encouraged to go out to work and find other alternatives for their children. Taking men away from mothers allows them and their children to become more controllable by the state. The mother feeds and washes her children, an excluded father is made to pay for their upbringing. But it's the government that raises the children, becoming the surrogate father and husband.